Hello, everyone, and welcome to Job Board Geek, the podcast about the business of connecting candidates and employers. I'm Jeff Dickey Chasen's The Job Board Doctor. I am your host, and I'm here today with the arbitrage inclined Stephen Rothberg <laughs> of College Recruiter. He is the co-host. Hey, Stephen, how's it going? Uh, it's going. It's going great. Although I think you meant albatross, not arbitrage. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> so um, today we actually have a really interesting guest, a uh, fellow I've known for a long time, Ian Partington originally of Simply Jobs, the founder. Uh, He's out of the UK. He's now on a new venture called HST Hiring Group, and he's doing another job board as well. And I'm sure he has his fingers into four or five different pots. Uh, We'll find out about that. But first, uh, Stephen, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, some financials I saw come up this week. ZipRecruiter was reporting their Q4 and the revenue for them is up 94%, even though the net income fell. I thought it was interesting because that, you know, 94%, that seems like a pretty big number to me, but it's interesting how they've been able to sustain this uh, in light of the fact that there don't seem to be enough candidates to be filling jobs. And I'm just guessing that they're making a persuasive case to employers that you need to stay out there and try to reach the candidates that are out there. Now, Zip is forecasting a year um, revenue of about 878 to 892 million, which is getting up towards that $1 billion mark. So Stephen, I'm kind of curious, what do you think? Do you think they did a good job or do you think they should have done better? Hmm. Okay. Well, I hadn't thought about it in that terms. I, I was thinking good job. I wasn't even thinking could it be better? So Zip is, has done a, a really fantastic job of executing. One of the things that, one of the reasons I really like to look at uh, Zip's earnings, um, its stock price is, it's really one of the only pure play job boards that are publicly traded. Um, Dice is another one. Um, mm-hmm. you know, if you look at um, Indeed owned by Recruit and some of the other ones like, you know, Monster by with Ronstad. There's so much of the staffing business that's, that gets into the stock price. You can't really look at that and, and say, you know, how how are job boards performing? Um, what does the market look like? Look at uh, job boards for valuation purposes. Um, but Zip is a good indicator for that. Um, they've got a, a really fantastic um management team, leadership team. The founders came from outside the industry with a whiteboard and just basically reimagined what it should look like from an employer and from a candidate standpoint. They've executed really wonderfully. Um, I, I would have to say that the reason that that their revenues are up so much is that they're riding the wave. The mm-hmm. small businesses, especially in their in their core market in the US, are, are hiring way more now than they were a year ago. And Zip is one of the best places for those employers to advertise those jobs. If if their if their earnings were up, you know, a paltry twenty percent, I, I think we would be you know throwing arrows and darts at at, at them and, and wondering what the heck they're doing over there. Um, but ninety four percent to me really indicates that that they're executing well and that the underlying economy is is working in their favor at this point. Yeah, I think that's true. And I was thinking about some of the other boards. I mean, you're right. Everyone's up and everyone that is um, publicly traded pretty much is up, Uh, you know, job boards from Seek to Job Index in Denmark to um, Dice that you mentioned. But most of them are not up 94 percent. You know, a lot of people are up 20 percent, 30 percent, something like that. So that's it's an impressive number. So we'll see how long they can keep it up. I mean, I think that's the challenge that indeed historically had run into until the pandemic uh, boom is that the bigger you get, the harder it is to make those big percentage jumps. So we'll see what happens. I think that the the zip also announced at the same time that they're doing a stock buyback. Um, If I'm not mistaken, it was like a hundred million dollars or something. Um, Mm -hmm. I think they went public at $21, maybe $22. Their stock was at, I think, $19. Um, so, so down a bit. A stock buyback means uh, basically that the, that the people in control think that the stock is undervalued. It's mm-hmm. a good time for them to be, to be pulling some of the stock, you know, to spend cash on 
on buyback shares when the stock price goes up to 22 or 25 or 30 dollars or whatever then they can always sit there, turn around and sell that to the public and, and and get more equity that way so i think the insiders at zip are feeling as good about their financial performances as you and i seem to be yeah well you know we recently talked to aaron stewart of job.com he's on a buying spree we'll see if uh, zip is his next buying target right <laughs> Uh, yes. Okay. Well, moving on. Um, uh, I am delighted that we are able to have with us today one of the pioneers in the job board industry in the UK, um, Ian Partington. He was the fellow that, if I remember this correctly, founded Simply Jobs and ran it for a number of years and is now running HST Hiring Group and running a uh, legal aid job board as well. And Ian, welcome to Job Board Geek. Good afternoon. Good morning. Yeah, it's one of those, no <laughs> matter, depending on where you are, right? So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, Ian, I was, I was wondering if you could give us a <clears throat> sort of a rundown of how you managed to get into this uh, interesting industry and um, how you came to, to uh, start Simply Jobs and where you are right now. Sure. Um, well, my first job board business was set up in 1999, a website called Just Engineers. Um, that was that was set up off the back of, uh, it was around the time of, you know, uh, various job boards starting to launch. Um, Monster was big in the UK, uh, job site was big in the UK, and I was actually working for an engineering recruitment consultancy. We just did, you know, a staffing firm. Um, but we were using these sites, job site and 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 Monster. I think Stepstone were in the UK for a small amount of time then, and it was just one of those you know entrepreneurial. I guess you know this this seems really easy to do. Why don't we build a job board and um, just specialise in engineering? <laughs> it's really easy. Um, this was from the guy who only three or four months earlier had started using email uh, in the in the business and. <laughs> But sort of long story short, I knew a, I knew a couple of guys who sort of run web development agencies, and I just said, you know, there's job site, we want that, but for engineering, and and it, it sort of went from there. Um, it was obviously at a time where you could get away with that type of attitude and no knowledge and and what have you, and that sort of took off uh, really well. Um, uh, and I was with that business for three, actively within that business for about three years. Uh, moved away a uh, few um, boardroom de- um, um, sort of dis- decisions that we, you know, I couldn't agree with. So I moved away from that, um, and then I set up on my own as, as simply. Um, and I knew that I wanted to stay in the job board business. I didn't want to move back into recruitment or anything like that. Um, but I also knew that essentially niche was the, the the way to go in my view. You know, there was a lot of generic job boards mm-hmm. out there. I saw you speaking to sort of Lee, Lee Biggins about this the other week, um, and I felt that niche was the way to go. So I've quite simply looked at, um, you know, what what niche areas are underserved in terms of um, of job boards and, and, and set up some new job boards. Uh, so we had simply sales jobs, and then there was simply marketing jobs, then there was simply HR jobs, um, and they were going along sort of quite nicely. Um, and that business grew. Uh, in the UK over a, well, I was with it for uh, 16 years. Um, mm-hmm. And I moved out of the business in uh, uh, July, end of July 2020. Um, so sort of since then I've been, um, I was really sort of pleased really when I, le- when I left the business and I made it sort of known on LinkedIn that I was leaving the business. The response to that was, was was quite humbling actually you know you know the the sort of the, the nice comments that people were making and what have you. it was it was it really was unexpected and quite humbling um but also off the back of that i got approached by a number of different job board operators to say would you would you like to come and do some work with us would you like to advise us would you like to do some consultancy work for us and i had a great time doing that it was it was it was it was excellent mm-hmm. you know 18 months of you know sitting in other people's businesses finding out what they're doing and then advising on you know what what i felt they were doing well and what they could improve on and and what have you i found that absolutely excellent because i had no desire no real desire to sort of at the time set anything else up i did i didn't sort of leave simply with mm-hmm. a right i'm going to go away now and, and and set something else up it was um it was just the time to leave um but 
as that consultancy time came on, there was more and more, I started to get that urge again to sort of work for myself and set something else up. Um, so now we're in the, now we've got HST hiring, which is a, um, basically a, a hiring business across various mm-hmm. different um, elements. So we've got um, a, um, a candidate management system. We've got a, we do traditional fee-based recruitment. So going right back 20 years to what I was doing sort of before I set up the job boards, we do mm-hmm. more recruitment as a service. Um, where we, where, you know, companies are, are outsourcing their their hiring uh, to us, but we're using the technology to help facilitate that, whether it be multi posting or or the candidate management system. Um, and I sort of got dragged back into the job boards as well, really. You know, as part of the the overall business, one of the um, one of the markets that we deal in quite a lot is the is the legal market in the UK. Um, but so that. So there's, there are a number of legal uh, law law based job boards, but we wanted to we wanted to be sort of niche within a niche. So we we deal in legal support jobs. So that that will be paralegals, legal assistants, legal secretaries, legal receptionists. So it's it's a niche within mm-hmm. a niche essentially because those are the guys that that those are the levels of people who use job boards to apply for jobs. Um, you tend not to find experienced solicitors or. Uh, or what have you, sort of using job boards, they'll use word of mouth or headhunting or LinkedIn or something sort of similar to that, really. Um, so, yeah, HST is, a, as I say, it's a, it's a, I don't want to use 360, it's a bit of a corporate buzzword, isn't it? But we, we, we essentially can hire, you know, we, we look to hire for companies, however they look to, they want to hire, basically, rather than sort of pigeonhole just digital or, or, or traditional. Right. And not going to them saying, this is the only way you can do it. You exactly. know, we'll give you a bunch of different options. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, Ian, um, you know, you're, if I, if I understand correctly, like where kind of you personally live, you're sort of in the Manchester, England area. Uh, Just outside, Northern England. Yeah. 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 Um, great. For those who haven't been there, it's just a wonderful area. I, I spent about a week in that Leeds, Sheffield, Manchester area a few years back. Yeah. It's just, it's awesome. But uh, that wasn't my question. My question, um, <laughs> you, you know the, the, the UK job board market um, better than I think Jeff and I could ever hope to. Um, what, what would you say is sort of the, the best thing? that job boards in that focus on the UK are doing and what would you say is the, what they, the sort of their biggest area for growth, their biggest, the biggest weakness, the biggest problem? Um, I think compared, I, I can only compare this to the US, uh, I think, um, and maybe some European, I, I do think that the UK market, uh, both job board vendor and direct, employers sort of uh, sort of embraced uh, have really embraced the the, the the sort of niche area there's a lot of niche job boards um in the uk which i don't really see as i say, can only really talk about the us and, and some of europe given my sort of experience i think there are more niche sites uh in the uk and and, and there's so, so there's a focus on being really good at one area as opposed to trying to be you know, obviously, people like you know Total Jobs and CV Library and people like Art and Read do do generic very very well. But I do think from a very early time, um, the UK sort of the, the, there was a lot of niche and a lot of focused job boards, and I do think that they do that well. You know, we know that they know their markets very well. Um, in terms of what they don't do well, um, I. I I can really only speak for for ourselves, but I do think we were sy- symptomatic of it. Is that is the reliance on on recruitment agencies, staffing firms for for, for business? Mm-hmm. Um, now, it's it's not to say that you don't want staffing firms as a client uh, or, or as a job board operator, it, it, um, but I think, and I can, and again, I can only really speak for simply on this: the the, the strive for 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 for, for money. Um, maybe diluted the quality of the product that you were given. Um, so you had recruitment agencies who had multiple vacancies, which meant there was multiple spam jobs, um, or there was jobs that were there just to capture, you know, job seekers and what have you. And 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 most job boards were were, were guilty of this. So I think 
maybe that the job seeker experience wasn't a high on the on the on the um on the sort of the the understanding of, of job board operators it was about it was about driving revenue not all as i said there were some really good ones out there uh, in in really niche areas who who didn't 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 do follow that route but that's just my view i think there was um but i think the pandemic and my time at the job board was was basically just after the pandemic had, had sort of started but you saw a lot of these job uh, recruitment agencies either go completely you know um you know what is it? When the tide's out, you can see who's wearing swim shorts. It was there was a lot of that sort of um, going on, <laughs> and also I think even the recruitment agencies, even then, they reconciled um, how many job boards they were using. I mean, we built simply on on a, on a subscription basis and monthly recurring revenue basis, and we lost a, obviously a decent amount of that in the in the March, April, May of when um, you know it first happened, and it was a bad time. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, I think I think that was probably that would probably be the good the good and the bad in my view. Well, Ian, I'm kind of curious, and this is a little related to what Stephen was asking. Um, you know, we've talked with some of the guests that we've had on the podcast about the shocks that have hit the industry over the last few years. So you know, there was the big recession of 2008, 2009, yep. and that was definitely you know something that shook out a lot of players. Um, and then job boards came back pretty strong after that. And the two shocks I see that were that I've heard people that I work with in the UK talk about the most are the pandemic, of course, which was across every place, but you know hit hit the UK just like all the rest of them. And then Brexit. Um, and those two things seem to have really had an effect on on the UK job board market. Um, looking at those two, do you have any? feel for which one you think is going to have the longest term effect on on the industry yeah it's interesting i think the the, the pandemic and i say i did i came out of the, the job board industry in the july so I, I can only talk about the four or five months but obviously i've kept a i'd like to keep abreast of what, what's been going on i think the job board industry it seemed to be that there was obviously a mass panic when it first happened you know nobody's recruiting mm-hmm. What's the what the hell is all this working from home situation? But in all truth, I think it lasted maybe three or four months, and I think after that time, you know, there was there was and the weather got a bit better, and the, and the lockdowns in the UK became sort of a little bit more lenient. Um, so I think companies became more understanding that this is the new normal, if you will. So this is the way that we're going to have to work mm-hmm. moving forward. And when you get to sort of September, October time, people started to recruit again, and and, and so. I think the dip for in terms of the pandemic was probably um, um, was was only a short period of time. It was it was a shock and awe sort of situation, really, where you know it was like, what the hell do we do here? You know, we've never seen this before. What do we do? How is this going to affect our business? You saw on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. for example, loads and loads of people open to work, open to work, and then all of it, it just seemed to be right. fairly overnight. All those open to work disappeared. You know, people had found jobs again, which was which was great. So I think it was only maybe a five or six month period. And as you've said, you know, um, previously about sort of zip recruiter and all these other job boards showing massive growth, you would expect massive growth on a really poor years previously, but I think they have recovered and I think they've recovered really well. You know, I know, um, you know, the, the generics in, in the UK are, are doing, you know, good business. So I don't think the pandemic was a long-term problem. Um, in terms of Brexit, I think the pandemic masked a lot of the problems that were potentially going to happen with Brexit. Um, I don't get over mm. I've never been involved in the hospitality industry or, or whatever it may be. There are certain industries that are going to be impacted by Brexit much more than than others. You know, the, the, the markets I've always been involved in have been more professional services and engineering and aviation and, and things like that. I mean, obviously, a- aviation's been, I wouldn't say decimated, but obviously it's, it's, it's had a pandemic and it's had a fuel you know the fuel rate rates have gone ridiculous, and you know that that's that's right. going to be a troubled sector for a while. I think. Um, so I, I'm not probably the best to talk about Brexit in in all truth, other than an overall view. Um, but I do think the pandemic, in terms of Brexit, maybe came at a good time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think one of the things that I noticed, and maybe this is different in the UK, but one of the key effects of the pandemic in the, in North America, for sure, has been that companies that were not using remote workers 
yeah. suddenly had to use remote workers. And yeah. so now we're sort of seeing a little bit of bounce back where it's kind of like a rubber band coming back where a percentage of those companies are saying, okay, now you got to be back in the office. Now you got to be back, you know, doing whatever you were doing. But a percentage of them are saying, hey, you know what? We don't, why? You know, this yeah. is an expense. Yeah, you know, let them keep working at home if that's what they want. So, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and I think that's affected some of the job boards in terms of how they've approached um, candidates. And in some ways, it's given them a bigger audience to put up in front of employers, at mm -hmm. least those employers. Yeah. I think I think that's but, been that's actually been probably one of the the impacts of 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 the pandemic that I didn't mention is that the power there's a bit of power shift a little bit where the the, the job seeker now has a lot I think a lot more power you know there there, there are less there are there are more jobs than there are job seekers so you know you, you see it all the time it's a difficult market to be to be working in and what have you um, one of the biggest questions that gets asked by job seekers now. 100% is what's the working arrangement? Is it work from home? Is it mm -hmm. hybrid working? Mm -hmm. I think most sensible businesses have, uh, have sort of gone with a hybrid working model um, whereby they're doing three days in the office, two days at home. You know, that, that, that brings its own problems because their, you know, terms of, you know, contracts of employments are five days a week in the office. So it's more of a discretionary decision. But I do think that contracts of employment are going to have to be rewritten uh, as time goes on uh, to, to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Well, well, listen, Ian, I, I uh, got to wrap this up, but I have one last question for you. I'm just curious to hear because I mean, you've been in the market for a long time through a lot of different business conditions. You went out of the market. Now you're kind of back in the market, but you're doing a bunch of different things. And I haven't asked this question of any other guests so far. Um, do you think job boards are on their way out? Uh, you know, the whole time I've been working in the industry, I started in 97. They've been saying, oh, yeah, job boards are dying. They're going to go away. They're going to go away. Do you think now we're actually at a point where over the next decade, next four or five years, job boards are going to disappear? No, hmm. no I, I really don't. Um, I do think that job boards probably more, you, more, more so goodness. than ever. <laughs> I, I do think job boards more so <laughs> than ever are going to have to really adapt to the new market, the, the, the way the market, because I think employers are far more savvy now about uh, recruiting. Um, I think, um, so they are going to have to do things like, you know, programmatic. I, I wrote an article and I put it on LinkedIn. I just look at, I found it the other day, actually, in 2016 about PPA and PPC. And there's, there's, there's not many mm -hmm. companies who are doing that, that, you know, obviously indeed are doing it really well. Uh, Zip Recruiter do it, you know, and, and, and what have you. But I do feel that that's going to come into it more because the, the, the buyer, the, the employer is far more savvy than they were even five more, five years ago. And I think they've started to move more now towards more digital marketing rather than using recruitment agencies. But I think there's obviously, there's still a space for both, but, I do think they're going to job boards are going to have to adapt their offering far more and far quicker than they probably had to do to do you know over the last two or three years. Yeah, that's that's a that's I think that's an insightful comment, and I think you know when I think about the industry because I I kind of look at it the same way that you do, but I, I think about what happened to Monster, and I feel like Monster, you know. At, they were initially innovative. They went through a period of acquisitions and they sort of sat fat and happy for a long time. And they lost their um, attention to the market. Yeah. And so I'll be curious to see if that happens with Indeed or it happens with, you know, any of these, you know, total jobs or any of these large companies. Um, I guess we'll just have to see. But um, no, absolutely, absolutely. anyway, I'm in. Yeah, Ian, I'm so glad that you were able to come on. It's good to see you, good to talk with you. And if any of our listeners want to get in touch with you, how do they do they do that? Uh, well, obviously on LinkedIn, they can connect and, and message me on LinkedIn. Uh, or if they want a message, it's ian at the hstgroup.co.uk. Great, great. Well, well, thanks, Ian. I uh, appreciate you coming on, on Job Board Geek. I've enjoyed it. Thanks very much, guys. Yep. Yep. And Stephen, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, how do they get a hold of you? Easiest way is uh, shoot me an email, Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N at collegerecruiter.com. Uh, Ian, I hope the next time we meet is 
in the same place as the last time we met, which was at a conference in Barcelona. I would, would uh, not have any objections to, to seeing you there. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. I'd be okay with meeting you in a pub in uh, London too. So you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, great stuff. Thanks uh, very much. Well, that, yep. Yep. Well, well, thanks. And uh, that's it for today's episode of Job Board Geek. Be sure to subscribe to our RSS feed or on Apple, Spotify, whatever you want to use, we're there. Feel free to review us, thumbs up or thumbs down. I'm Jeff Dickey Chasens. I'm the Job Board Doctor. You've been listening to the only podcast that focuses on the business of connecting candidates and employers. That's it for this episode. And we will see you again next time.